Let's do this then. Lesson number seven of the straight line chapter. This time we are wanting to look at perpendicular lines. So the first thing you want to think about is what is meant by the word perpendicular. It's something that you may have come across before. Some of you may remember. Perpendicular lines really are two lines that meet at right angles. Okay, they're going to cross at a right angle. For example, with these two diagrams here, you can see there's two lines. They are meeting. There's a wee smiley face, like Grace. They're meeting at a right angle, so they would be perpendicular. It'd be the same if you turned them round as well. If you're turning them, they're still going to meet at right angles, so they would still be perpendicular. But if you ever get two lines crossing at right angles, they'd be known as perpendicular. What's so special about them? Well, if you work out the gradients of two lines that are perpendicular and you multiply them together, you will always, 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 always get negative one. So, how does that help us? Well, say you had two lines that were perpendicular, you knew the gradient of one of them, what you can do is you can easily work out the gradient of the other. I'll give you more of an explanation on the next page, but the quick way of doing it, the quick thing to remember, is uh, to calculate a perpendicular gradient is to flip the original gradient upside down and change the sign. That means, say you had a line that had a gradient of three quarters, so let's say the gradient here is three quarters. In order to work out the gradient of this line, you would take the three quarters, turn the three over four upside down, so you get 4 over 3, and you change the sign. So 3 quarters is obviously positive, so you make it then a negative. So it would be negative 4 over 3. I'll show you some examples just in a couple of pages' time. But where does that all come from? So more of an explanation on this. It comes from, imagine if you had a point. Let's say this is the point AB, just on the very end of this line here. If you were to rotate that 90 degrees about the origin, the point would then become negative b a. You can try this yourself if you have any square paper, but take a point, rotate it through 90 degrees and you get negative b a. If you think about it then, you will have the gradient of the first line. So let's say this was the first line which has the point a b just on the end. The gradient would be vertical over horizontal, so that's going to be b over a. The gradient of the second line, again you can work that out by doing the vertical over horizontal, so this time you're going to have A over negative B. If you then multiplied them together, so if you did gradient 1 times gradient 2, you'd have gradient 1, B over A, times A over negative B, and you're multiplying them together. Multiply the numerators, multiply the denominators, so you'd end up with AB over negative AB. AB and AB would cancel out, really leaving you with 1 over negative 1, which is just negative 1. And that's your answer. So that's where it comes from. If you multiply them together, you would get negative 1 if they're perpendicular. As I said, the quick way of remembering it, though, is if they are perpendicular, turn the, uh, turn the fraction upside down and then just change the sign. So some examples with that, then. Let's look at example one. Fill in the table and show the perpendicular gradients. So let's say you've got a gradient of one half. What would the perpendicular gradient be? Again, the quick way of doing it, turn it upside down and change the sign. So one over two would become two over one. Well, think about that. Two over one means two divided by one, which is just two. And you also change the sign. So you get negative two. The next one, negative 5 over 3. If you turn that upside down, you would get 3 over 5. And the negative changes the sign, so it become positive. So it's just positive 3 over 5. Next one, 0 0.25. Maybe a bit trickier because you're thinking, how would you turn that upside down? One way of doing it is to imagine it as a fraction. So 0 0.25 is just 1 quarter. It's 1 over 4. If you turn 1 over 4 upside down, you would get 4 over 1. So you would have 4 over 1, which is the same as 4, and again, remember to change the sign. So that's a positive, so the perpendicular gradient will be a negative. If you have just one 
but you could think about this two different ways. You could think one is the fraction just one over one. So turn it upside down, you still get one over one, which is still one, and you change the sign, so it would then be a negative. Also, you could think about it as if you did one times something to get negative one, it would have to be negative one. That's what you would get. If you've got negative six, if you want to work out the gradient that's perpendicular to that, well, when it's just a whole number, uh, you're sometimes best imagining it as a fraction and just putting it over one. So it's negative six over one. Turn that upside down, you get one over six, and the negative gradient would then become a positive, just like that. And the last one, if the gradient was zero, think about what the perpendicular gradient would be for that. Again, flipping it upside down, changing the sign, well, it's zero as a fraction, it's not really making much sense. But remember, if you've got a gradient of zero, it's just going to be a horizontal line. Think about what you can say about the gradient if it's going to be vertical, if you rotate it 90 degrees. That's right, thinking back to lesson one, it is undefined, okay? So the gradient, the way you always find the perpendicular gradient is to flip it, change the sign, unless it's going to be zero or undefined, okay? That is the only exception. Example two, prove that the line with equation x plus 3y plus 6 equals 0 is perpendicular to the line y equals 3x minus 1. So with this one then, show that that line with that equation is perpendicular. How would you know the lines are perpendicular? Well, if they are perpendicular, then you multiply the gradients together, you should be getting negative 1. If you multiply them together and you don't get negative 1, they are not perpendicular. So we need to know the gradients of each line. So let's do them one at a time. Let's take equation 1, x plus 3y plus 6 equals 0. How would you get the gradient of that line? Think back to previous lessons. You know in order to get the gradient in the y-intercept and so on, you need it in the form y equals mx plus c. So you need y just on its own. So you need to get rid of the x and get rid of the 6. Either take them away or move them to the other side and then change the sign. But either way, you would get 3y equals negative x, take away 6. Still need to get y equals, so from there, get rid of that times by 3 by dividing every single term by 3, or move the 3 over and divide. Doing that, you would get y equals, and then negative 1x would become negative 1 over 3, x and 6 divided by 3 would just become 2 because I'm dividing everything by 3. From there then the gradient of that line there would just be that's right negative 1 third. Okay next one y equals 3x take away 1 that I'm calling equation 2. The gradient for that, well, I don't have to do anything fancy. It's written in the form of y equals mx plus c. I know m this time is just going to be 3 because it's already in the form of y equals. Just take the coefficient of x. So that's me got the gradients. How would you then prove that they are perpendicular? You would be multiplying them together. You're right. So you've got m1 times m2 equals. So m one's negative one third m2 is 3, times them together, well, treat the 3 as 3 over 1, so then do 3 times 1 is 3, and then 3 times the 1 that would be in the bottom there, so you just get negative 3 over 3, which is just the same as a negative 1. How do you know then they're perpendicular? That's right, it's because you get negative 1 when you multiply them together. So you would say that. Since m1 times m2 equals negative 1, the lines are perpendicular. Let's try one more example. Example 3. Find the equation of the line through the point negative 3, 1, which is perpendicular to the line y equals 2 minus 4x. With this amazing example, you're having to work out the equation of the line. So again, what are you thinking when you're wanting to work out the equation of the line? Say it with me. Gradient point equation. Let's try that again. Gradient point equation. Better. So with this, do you know the gradient? No, we don't. Do you know a point? Do you know the point on the line? 
Well, yes, you do. It says find the equation of the line that goes through that point, negative 3, 1. So that is the point that you would use, and then you could work out the equation if you only knew the gradient. What we do know, though, is that this line is perpendicular to the one that we're wanting. So, first of all, take that line that we're given in the question and think what's the gradient of this line. Be careful not to write down 2. It's the coefficient of x that you would write down, which would be negative 4. We know that the line is not parallel, though, so it's not going to be negative 4. That's the gradient we want. It's the perpendicular gradient we want. Okay, it's the equation of the line through the point which is perpendicular to this line. So if the gradient of this line is negative 4, the perpendicular gradient, flip it upside down, change the sign. Remember, if it's just a whole number, you can put it over 1 to turn it into a fraction. So turn it upside down, you get 1 over 4, and that's negative, so the perpendicular will be positive. So that is the gradient. From there, gradient point equation, gradient point equation, you know the gradient, yes. You know the point, yes, so you can work out the equation. So y minus b equals m bracket x minus a. From there, again, that's a, that's b, take your point. We've got a and b, it's alphabetical. a is first, b is second, so you can sub in these values. So you've got y minus b would be y minus 1 equals m. Make sure you choose the right gradient here. It'll be this quarter that you're wanting and not the negative 4. It's the perpendicular gradient. So you're putting in one quarter, bracket x minus a would be x minus uh, negative 3. Remember, take away a negative means you would add, so it becomes x add 3. If you wanted to do that in a couple of lines, that is fine. From there, again, we've got fractions. How would you get rid of the fraction? Well, how to get rid of this, divide by 4 by moving it to the other side and multiplying by 4, or multiply uh, both sides by 4. Think about it any way you want. But from there, you'd have 4 bracket, y take away 1 would equal, here you're left with 1 bracket, x add 3, we're no longer dealing with that, divide by 4, we get rid of that. From there, multiply out the brackets, 4 times y is 4y, 4 times negative 1 is negative 4, 1 times x is x, 1 times 3 is 3, and from there I'd probably get into so one of the forms that we know. So the best way to probably do this is to move the negative 4 to the other side, or add 4 to both sides, and you're left with 4y equals x plus 7, because you're just adding 4 over here. You could always go further and divide everything by 4, so y would equal 1 quarter x plus 7 over 4. It doesn't matter if you go on to do that, you could leave it as that because that's not got any fractions, it's maybe a bit nicer, but both would be acceptable. If you're okay with that, give some of these questions a shot. If you're not, have another look back at the videos, ask me if you need any help. Uh, but it's on page 218, and make sure you do questions 1 to 16. Quite a few questions there, starts off with easy questions and then gets harder. As usual, think about how well you're getting on with this, if it's really, really easy, if it's really, really bad, or if you're somewhere in between. Just give me some feedback and let me know. Thank you!